welcome to Christmas Advent Day number two. We are today going to be performing a gentle back sequence. This is going to create extension and flexion through the spine. We are then going to be practicing our locust pose, Salapasana. However, this is not ideal for anyone who suffers from high blood pressure, who may be pregnant, or anyone that has any gastric ulcers. But you are still more than welcome to join in the flow at the start. So what I'd like you to do is just sit down comfortably in your space or on your mat and I will see you there. Okay, so we're starting our practice today by coming into child's pose. You have two options here. You can either keep the knees so that they are hip distance apart or you can start to take the knees out to the side of your mat. So you're either coming into a wide child's pose or knees together. So we're going to start to bring the glutes back towards the heels, sitting up nice and tall. We start to fold forwards and allowing the body to stretch through the back, through the arms, lowering the chest down. Becoming aware of your breath, noticing how it's feeling how the body is also feeling. Letting your breath guide you to a little bit more awareness. And then when you're ready, after about four to five breaths, we're going to slowly come up. Bring the knees in towards the hips, so they are underneath if they're not already, and the wrists are underneath the shoulders. So coming into our tabletop position, we're going to work into cat and cow. So we're going to round the spine, draw the stomach in through the navel. Try and separate the shoulder blades, chin comes down towards the chest, push through the earth, through the hands, through the tops of the feet, and then start to come into cow, gazing forwards, Dipping through the spine, so we're starting to extend the vertebrae. And then come in to cow again. And as you breathe out. And then coming through to cow. And you can keep this movement going for however many times you want. Maybe you wish to hold one of the positions for longer, or maybe you just wish to keep breathing as you're starting to work in through the spine. And then coming back to our tabletop position, we're going to keep the knees underneath the hips, walk the hands forwards and soften the chest down towards the mat, extending the arms, lowering the forehead down. So our puppy pose is helping us to stretch also through the shoulders, extend the spine, if you wish to bring the hands to knee to take them above the head, you can do that too. Take them into that prayer position. And then very slowly start to come up back onto all fours, just taking the hands a little bit further forward than shoulder, underneath the shoulders. We then bring the weight forward, so now that the shoulders are over the wrists, we're going to engage the core, tuck the tailbone under, as we then lower down through our chaturanga, keeping the elbows in. So lowering all the way down to the earth, we then start to come up to a baby cobra. So we're just lifting the upper body off the mat. We're just gently pressing the tops of the feet into the ground. Hands are feeling quite light. And then as we breathe out, we're going to come up onto all fours, round the spine, coming through that cat pose as you draw the glutes towards the heels. Exhale. 
We're going to go again, inhale, coming forwards. Exhale, lower the chest down to the mat. Inhale, up to cobra, and then exhale, rounding through cat, drawing the glutes towards the heels. And we continue that movement, connecting it with the breath. Inhale up. Exhale back. So the breath is that we inhale as we're coming all the way up or forwards. We exhale as we lower or bring the body back. Last time. And on the final one, coming up to all fours, just realigning yourself. We're going to take the right arm all the way up towards the ceiling. So extend all the way up, looking at that right hand, and then breathing out, feeling it underneath the left, coming all the way down to the shoulder. Coming into our thread the needle position. Now what you can do is you can either stay here with the left hand or you can take it forwards to the side. Maybe you want to loop it around the back, see if you can grab hold of the right thigh. Gently release that left hand if it's not already down to the earth and then gently start to push all the way back. Coming back to all fours, we go again on the other side. So inhale, lifting up with the left arm. Exhale, feed it underneath the right, coming down to the shoulder. Again, your right arm can either come forwards, out to the side, or all the way around the back. Releasing the hand, placing it down onto the mat, and gently easing up to all fours. Perfect, we're going to bring the weight forwards again. Chaturanga. Pushing through now to a cobra. So you might be on a bit of a higher cobra than you were before. Tops of the feet just gently pressing into the earth. The shoulders are nice and relaxed. Breathe out as we lower down. We're going to keep, not the elbows out to the side. We want to keep them in as we lower back down. We're now going to take the fingertips to the earth, just slightly further um, wider than our mat. We're going to take a deep breath in. As we push up to cobra, exhale, lower back down. We're going to go a couple more times. Deep breath in. And exhale. Inhale up. Last one. And lower. Place one hand on top of the other. Gently let the forehead rest down and just shake out the hips. Shaking out the back. And then placing the hands back underneath the shoulders, push back into your child's pose. And rest here for as long as you need. Okay, so now that we have warmed up our back, we are going to come into practicing Salapasana, Locust Pose. So for this position, it really does work the core, the lower back, the legs as well and so this is why it's really important for anyone who has high blood pressure for anyone who is pregnant or anyone that has any kind of ulcers whether it's stomach ulcer or gastro ulcer it is advised for you not to practice this pose so what we're going to do is we're going to start by lying down on our fronts 
to come down to your mat. And just center yourself, feeling comfortable here. And there are lots of different variations as well that you can do. So our first one we're going to do is just start by lifting up one leg at a time. So we have the right or the leg, let's see how far you can take it up and then lower back down. And go again, lifting up the right leg, coming back down. So you can alternate between each pose, each, pose, each leg, alternating, so that you are just beginning to work different sides of the body. You're pressing down through the hips. Now you shouldn't feel any pressure into the lower back. If you're starting to feel any pain, you might be taking your legs up too high. So they can come very small off the ground. And you can continue with this for a moment. When you have finished, you're then going to bring your hands down by your side. Top to the hands, pressing into the mat. And again, alternating now between each leg. Now you might be finding this a little bit harder. Press down through the tops of the hands as well. And then come to rest. Give your hips a little bit of a shake. And then we can try both legs at the same time. The upper body is going to stay on the mat to begin with. So take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, push into the mat to lift both legs up. Slowly lower down, and then give your hips a bit of a shake. And then we go again, just gently pressing into Hips lifting both legs up and come back down. You might find just once or twice is enough. We can start to then press into the mat through the tops of the feet as we start to lift the upper body up. So we start to take a deep breath in. Keeping the legs on the floor and lowering back down. Go again. Inhale, lift up and exhale, lower down. Go again, lifting up and exhale, lower down. Final one, or you can just rest. And then give your legs and your hips all a little bit of a shake. Maybe just come to rest for a moment with the cheek resting down into the mat. We're then going to add it into some variations. So you can take your arms around behind you, interlace the hands. Again, taking your gaze forward, you can lift both legs off the mat and come back down. You can try lifting up the upper body and lowering back down. Or if you're wanting to try both at the same time, you've really got to contract the core so you're also using your core to lift up your upper body. Your hips are firmly centering down into the mat and you're using the strength of your legs to lift them up. So you're relying on your back, but it's not just your back that is working here. So take a deep breath in and lift up. And come back down. Again, you can give your arms and legs back a bit of a shake. If you wish to go into child's pose, you can do as well. So our final variation we're going to try today is by also having the hands underneath you. So we're going to have the palms facing down and they're going to always be lying on your arms as you lift your legs up off the ground. So as you come to lie down, you may just want to stretch through your, through your shoulders, through the wrists a little bit before you come all the way down. Placing one hand and then the other underneath. 
little fingers might just touch. And then you're going to use your core to start to lift up the legs. So make sure your hip bones are not going to press down into your arms. And lower down. One last time, taking a deep breath in. And lower down. Release the arms, place them underneath you. Counter pose for our locus. Salafasana is coming into child's pose. You can bring your arms down by your side to rest. Taking a deep breath in and out. Thank you for joining in today. Don't forget to hit subscribe in order to follow the remainder of our Christmas Advent yoga sessions. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Namaste.